All right, and welcome to a, another episode of SAS Bites, your mostly weekly bite of SAS during a lunch break. Um, I'm your host, Micah Godbolt. It's been a busy last couple of weeks, um, and as you can tell, I've been rearranging and standing at a standing desk and doing all sorts of stuff last few uh, weeks. So we're going to get back at it this week and um, finish up this um, series that we've been doing on Flexbox, talking about um, uh, spent last several weeks spending... Um, talk about the different ways you can set up Flexbox and the different values that you can use for uh, not only the containers, but the items within. Uh, so certainly dive back and check those out as well. Uh, last week, we talked about a couple of examples. Um, and today, I also want to go through really a pretty quick, simple example. I kind of just want to wrap this up with a little bit of a use case of where you can use Flexbox and how the values um, come in to make your job really, really easy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and tweet this out. If you didn't get this link, it's tweeting out as we speak. Um, uh, link, because <laughs> I'm not too creative. <laughs> if you're following live, I just tweeted that out on at uh, SASBytes, which is where you can follow us on Twitter. Otherwise, the link uh, to this um, code pen will be in the YouTube video. So let's jump over there and let's take a quick look at what we're going to try and build. So this is going to be your basic navigation bar. Um, as you can see here, we already have a couple of navigation items. We've got a search box with a submit button, as well as uh, a little user section where we can log out. And we've got a little Phil Murray filling that in for us. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to make this into a nice, beautiful, you know, top bar navigation. Now, typically this is done with lots of floats and sometimes fixed height values and like, oh, can we vertically center it and all that kind of crazy stuff that CSS makes you do. Um, and fortunately with Flexbox, Flexbox, this gets a whole lot easier. So um, we're just gonna jump through, um, I've kind of already got a preset up in here, walk through each of the values and explain how they work and how they make this job super easy. Now I'm not showing the float version. So if you need a fallback for i9, if this is gonna be a, you know, a live site out there in the world that you want, um, you know, uh, some of those old luggers to be able to use, um, then you need to go back and create a, a float version as well, um, which you could really just do with a bunch of floats and then just say, forget the vertical centering. Um, so let's just walk through this. Um, we've got a top section, which is just our, like our main, um, you know, overall, uh, here we go, um, encompassing everything. And what you can see has this nice white back background. So that gives us some context. We're just gonna turn on flex for that. And since we have three items inside here, flex automatically says, all right, flex is default to being a uh, column view. So, um, or horizontal, whatever you call that view. Um, so it's gonna spread them out one, two, three, um, uh, you know, just right, just like they're being floated. But fortunately they're not floated. Uh, one of the big differences you see here is if you were to float all the items in here, um, that box would actually collapse. You have to put in some clear fixes and all that. With flex, Works nicely, it's supposed to work like that. It keeps the background of the top and we're ready to go. So let's look at this nav first. Uh, the nav is just a collection of, collection of three links. Um, and right now, obviously you see they're stacked. We would then have to do more floating. We don't have to do that with Flexbox. We just turn display flex and we automatically get display flex um, of that horizontal. Now again, if you wanted this to go vertical, you could do um, um, flex direction and change direction of that and do them vertically, uh, which you might change for when you maybe move to a mobile nav or something like that. Again, we're just gonna do a quick desktop one today. Um, one thing you note though is, <clears throat> since we have this larger image in there, um, and I can even show this more with even larger images, is you know that that text isn't centered in, um, uh, in that space. Now, fortunately, Flexbox gives us that feature. Now, if you were to, um, if you were to float this, floats only take up as much room as the content uh, that they're in. But fortunately with Flexbox, it understands the context that it's in and realizes I'm in this flex container and the flex container is so big. So it's able to say, okay, I'm gonna align item center and it knows what that center is because it actually it knows that context of that container it's in. So Flexbox solves all those problems, makes it extremely easy to use, easy to set up some of these some of these things that typically take a lot more work to do. So, um, making sure I'm not getting tweeted at about anything wrong. Okay, we're good. 
So the next thing we want to do is take the search box in the middle is because we want that social just to be all the way out to the right and we want the search box to take up the rest. Now, typically this was kind of tricky because to get that so the, the social box out to the right, we would maybe like float that right or, or maybe float it left, but then have to make the search box big enough to fit that space which you could either do with um, you know, fixed widths, you know, with pixel values, you could do percentage width, but then you have to make sure that there's enough percentage room for the navigation and so on and so forth. Again, all these annoying things that you had to do with floats and percentages that you don't have to do with Flexbox anymore. So all we're gonna do is turn on flex and that, flat, and that search item in the center is now gonna take up, it's going to grow to fill up the extra space. So you see without this, our search box and everything doesn't fill up the entire, um, uh, the, the entire top space that we have. Uh, and we, and the, the default values for flex uh, grow is, is zero, that they, they won't grow to fill up the space. So if we change flex to be able to grow, uh, and this is one thing um, actually that I, I found out um, just a, a couple weeks ago at uh, PDXS um, that Scott Vandalay was happy to, to share was, um, typically flex um, is something like the flex is like that that combo one that you can do um, but if you only pass in flex of one it'll also just do the flex grow so flex of one is the same as doing flex grow exact same thing but when you do flex of one you can also you know put in the um, the second value can also be the flex shrink so anyway quick shortcut and also um, less words than flex grow. <laughs> so the next thing we need to do is, well, we've got the search box. Sure, the search box, the search container itself is filling up the whole this whole space. So you can see this div here is taking up this whole space from right here all the way to over here. Um, but what it's not doing is its contents aren't filling up uh, the space inside of it. So we just keep nesting our flex boxes all the way down. And we just turn on flex for the search and you get a couple things going on. For one, the first thing it says is, hey, sweet, I'm flex. And the default flex is to basically stretch. Um, so it's going to attempt to stretch those inputs, which you can see for input and submit actually makes it stretch across the entire space. Not what we want. So instead of aligned items stretch, we'll change it to aligned items of center. Now we can also do flex start. Uh, I think it's start. Yeah, hey, I got it right. Flex start or flex end as well. If you want to have that top and bottom, which I don't know why you would, but for aesthetic reasons, flex center allows all the items inside there to be inside of that flex alignment. So very cool. We've got those two items um, spread out horizontally. And the last thing we need to do here is take the input um, and change this to a flex one. Again, flex one means flex grow of one which means since there's empty space inside of this container, it will grow to fill up that space. Boom. If we change this to submit for some crazy reason, um, or button, I guess in this case, then button would fill up all the extra space. Obviously don't wanna do that. So we'll change input to flex one and we'll move on. We're just about done. So we can go down here to our login. Once again, we've got this log out and then we've got the Phil Murray right underneath it. Our design actually wants to have everything nice and centered right in the middle of everything. So to do this, we're just gonna turn on display flex again, which pretty much we, anytime you have a grouping, you probably want to display flex anyway. And then we can go uh, a line of center like that. So, and that basically gives us exactly what we want with a very, very small amount of code. And the great thing here is whatever type of, whatever size of photo we decide to drop in here, our design is going to work perfectly with it, like that. So no matter how big that image is and how old Phil Murray's picture is, uh, all, everything else in there is going to be perfectly aligned, centered right along with it. None of this like, um, you know, display inline block with um, align center stuff or trying to figure out what the height is and set margins or use line heights or any of the hacks we've spent years and years and years using to do these types of layouts over and over again. I know I've done many. Flexbox makes them trivial. I love it. And the great thing about this is without the Flexbox, with just floats, yeah, you're probably gonna have to clear, clear fix the top thing, but it'll still function. You know, things might not be centered or exactly the way you want them, but getting fallbacks is not that big of a deal. 
And as IE9 starts to become, you know, a long distant, horrible memory, um, hopefully it means that we're not going to be dealing with those issues for that much longer. And we'll be able to build things using these modern tools that allow us to build things like this with 31 lines. I'm at line 31 on my CSS to do this whole thing. Uh, I've even got spaces in there and padding and margins and all that kind of stuff. So grasp on the Flexbox. It's ready for prime time as long as you're willing to say, I just need fallbacks for IE9. And from there, just start building your stuff. Um, I think a lot of people are really afraid. It's like it's not, it's not ready to go yet. It's not fully baked. It's ready to go. We're using it in production and major, major large sites with uh, you know, worldwide distribution uh, with reasonable fallbacks, of course. Um, but the things you can do with it are amazing. The browser support is incredible. Um, so go ahead and start diving into it as soon as you can. Check out the previous videos for more information on it. And I hope you've learned something today and learned something about Flexbox. Uh, shoot me any of your questions um, at SASBytes. Follow previous episodes of this podcast uh, at youtube.com slash SASBytes. And speaking of SAS, um, I think what's going to be happening, and I, hopefully I'm not wrong at the eat the words, um, I'll be doing a series here in a little bit. Um, something I've done the last couple of years of like a, a road to SAS by, or a, sorry, a SAS conf. Uh, SAS conf is coming up. Uh, I wonder if they've picked a date yet. Um, SAS conf uh, 2015. Not that it probably matters at this point. Is going to be in Austin. It's going to be Austin this year, which is kind of cool. Cool. November 11th through 14th. Uh, so they just got those dates out. Uh, and we're going to be doing uh, a series of episodes uh, where we get a chance to sit down with a lot of the um, uh, with a lot of the speakers. Hopefully, all the speakers. Talk to them about their sessions, about the, how they got in the SaaS, and what they're excited about for uh, this upcoming event. So it should be a really fun series. Uh, probably a good seven, eight, nine uh, episodes. There's lots of speakers uh, at. Uh, um, at SASConf this year. We're probably gonna have to double and triple them up on episodes just to get as many in as we can. So look forward to those. Uh, and again, um, stay sassy and we will catch you hopefully next week. See ya.